We'll explore power supplies. Computers run on electricity like most consumer electronic devices. There is AC and there is DC and the AC power is converted into DC by the power supply unit, also known as the PSU. This powers all the devices and components in the computer and different CPUs, GPUs and storage devices, all of these consume different amounts of power. So we need to make sure that when you choose a power supply unit, it can cover all of these different devices. There are online calculators that you can use that help you choose which power supply unit is the correct one and which can provide with the correct amount of power needed for your new build. Now let's look at some of the basics. In electricity, voltage is the electrical force. So this is what moves the electrons through a conductor and that's how you get the, get the electricity. The current is the quantity or the flow of electrons that are moving past a point within the circuit in one second. So the higher the current flow, the greater the heat generated as well. Watts are the measure of how much juice a device needs. So this is the unofficial way. To, you can think of it as different products and different devices need different amount of power and different amount of energy or different amount of uh, juice and that's that's measured in watts so your iPhone requires a certain amount of power and your iPad might need more power and the watts W is the voltage times the, the amperage so it's voltage times the current in a circuit is the is a formula for the number of watts so when you're buying different devices and products they will actually tell you how much power they actually need and how many watts they need. So for example, if you're buying a new video card, which is usually something that requires a lot of power, it'll actually tell you how many watts that it will need and you can use that when you're making decisions into buying a PSU that actually covers all of those watts. So you have to add up all the different components and all the different requirements of wattage for each component and that gives you the total amount of power that's required from a PSU. So let's look at an example. So this is one of the, the newer and more expensive video cards. This is the GeForce RTX 2080. This is the super version with 8 GB RAM and it's the PCIe Express 3.0 with 16 lanes that we discussed in our other lectures. So if you look at the specs, you can, you can see that the thermal design power is 250 watts. So it's telling you that it needs at least 250 watts. So you want to make sure that you have a power supply unit that can provide that much power just for this video card. It, it's also telling you what kind of a power connector it uses here. And it's even being helpful in giving you a recommendation of the, the, the type of power supply unit you should get so it's saying that you should look into getting something that's around 650 watts total. So in addition to the voltage, current and wattage, there is one more thing, that's the resistance. So resistance is what resists the, the current that's flowing in a wire and that's measured in ohms. So certain wires have, so different wires have different resistance values that you can look into and if you send more current through a wire that uh, than the resistance value so let's say if, you, if there is a wire that has a resistance value of 50 and you're sending 100 amps through that then that wire is going to break now in electricity as we discussed in the beginning you have ac and dc ac is alternating current and dc is direct current in ac all the electrons keep alternating the direction of the flow and the uh, electrons are constantly moving in different directions. In DC, all the electrons flow in the same direction. AC is more efficient in sending electricity over long distances, which is why the, the connector from your, um, your generator to your home is going to be an AC 
but then most of the consumer electronic devices, including computers, they need DC to function. So that's why you have transformers that go from AC to DC, and those are the little black boxes that you might see even for other devices. So those are different transformers that are converting the wall socket AC to the to DC for the devices. And different devices have different requirements, so that's why you need to look at the actual device and it'll tell you how many volts and how many how much current it requires and you have to get the specific transformer that's built for that exact uh, requirement so the PSU units in America the the current the AC flows in 110 to 112 volts sometimes you might even see 115 which is the which is the same thing because it's in the same range and in uh, most of the other countries it's usually 220 to 240 volts so some of the PSUs actually have a switch, like the one that you can see in the picture here, where you can switch between the, the 110 and the 220, but uh, a lot of the other ones do it automatically. So they detect once the, the current starts flowing and then they'll switch between 110 and 220. So if there is a switch, then you wanna make sure that you have it in the correct toggle. So if you're in Europe and you have a PSU unit set to 110, then it's going to burn out because you're getting an input of 220 volts and then its requirement is 110. They also have an on-off switch and the, the three-prong connector that you see is called the IEC 320 connector. Usually the PSUs supply DC for 3.3 volts, 5 volts and 12 volts plus or minus. So most of the motherboards use a 20 or 24 pin connector and most of the peripherals use a Molex Mini SATA or a PCIe connector. So the, these are the ones that you can see in the, in the pictures here as well. The Molex connectors supply 5 volts and 12 volts current and they're usually used for fans and older drives. The Mini supplies 5 volts and 12 volts to peripherals that's also old. The SATA power connectors, they provide 3.35 and 12. And then you also have the SATA Slimline, which has a six pin power segment and a micro connector that has a nine pin connector as well. And then you have the PCIe Express. So this has a six pin power connector. And these are usually for like the, the video card that we talked about. The very early on power supplies used to be AT power supplies and uh, later on it became the ATX power supplies. So those the ATX are the ones that you'll see in most of the computers. And uh, the latest one is the ATX 12 volts 2.0. So these are the ones that you'll see if you're buying a new computer or if, or if you're building a new gaming desktop and so on, that's going to be the ATX 12 volts uh, 2.0 power supply. You can also find a mini ITX and a micro ATX. So these are smaller form factors that are useful in building the smaller computers. So if you're buying, if you're building a micro ATX motherboard computer or a micro mini ATX motherboard computer, then you'd also use a smaller form factor power supply unit for those. So a typical hard drive will only need about 15 watts but a CPU might need 150 watts and a graphics card might need 300 watts. So the power supply unit, as I discussed earlier, you'll have to make sure that it can cover all of these devices and even give a bit of room for any or any expansions that you might add. Now, if you buy a higher capacity power supply, it doesn't mean that it's going to consume all of that in your electricity and your bill is going to be higher. So if you buy a 150, if you buy a 1500 watt power supply unit and your total requirements for all the components added together come to about 800, then you'll only get built for the 800 on a monthly basis. So you won't be paying for 1500 watts every month. ESUs can get really hot as well. And you wanna make sure that you have, the, you have good airflow in your computer. So if you're building your new tower, you wanna make sure that you have the correct cool air coming in from the front, usually through the grill, and then the, the hot air always rises up. So you wanna make sure that you have the correct slots open and uh, you have the air 
the hot air to escape from the top. Now sometimes you might have expansion slots that are not in use but uh, you don't have the, the covers on them so you don't want to leave those slots open because that will actually disrupt the airflow and actually cause a heating problem. Now there's a fan inside the, the power supply unit as well that provides some sort of cooling. So all of this can be tracked through software because there are different sensors in all of these different fans that provide the, the speed of the fan and also the, the temperature of the, the surrounding. So all of this can be tracked with software. So this is something that I use for, uh, for my laptop and this is it's called the iStats menu and you can, get the, you can get other generic versions as well. So here you can see that there are all sorts of different sensors for the fans. So there's a battery sensor, CPU sensors, and uh, there is the RAM sensors, just the proximity because the RAM obviously doesn't have a, have a fan, but this is able to actually tell you the temperature near the, the CPU, near the, the GPU, and, uh, and near the RAM. So you can also see what the speeds of these SSDs are and uh, you can also see if any of these temperatures are, if they are not in range, then they will turn red and will get alerts as well. And, and you want to act as quickly as possible because if things are getting heated, then you'll actually start seeing things melt on your chipset. Now if you want to troubleshoot power supplies, usually they're fairly binary. So either they work or they're not working. So if they just die, that means they just stop working. Or sometimes they just slowly stop degrading as well. So in that case, you can actually check to see if the voltage that's being supplied to all the different components is steady and equal. And also you can check to see if the, the voltage is coming in into the power supply is correct and stable as well. So both, both sides. And you can also check to see if there is, there shouldn't be more than a 10% variation in either of those. Now a lot of the power supplies won't turn on unless they're actually connected to the motherboard. So if you're, if you find yourself doing a lot of troubleshooting of power supplies, then you, you can get a separate device that, uh, that lets you directly plug the power supply into it. And then you can use that to diagnose. That's called the ATX tester. If you see some obvious issues like the, the power supply is smoking or you smell some something burning, then, uh, then obviously you want to stop and replace it right away. These power supply units are fairly cheap so you can, uh, you can replace them without having to actually go through the repair process. So you can use a multimeter to troubleshoot the, the power supply units. So it's the same multimeter that you might have used for the, the motherboard as well. So you can use that for the PSUs. And in this case, you can set the, the range to minus 20 to plus 20, because that's the max amount of the, the voltage that you'll see or should see in a PSU. For more details, check the link in the description. Learn with Wits Labs, success certified.